Hey everyone, uh, this is Mark Sheverton again, as I bet you've guessed, and I wanted to talk with you about um, battle scenes. I see a lot of battle scenes on my website, under the fan fiction part, I have gotten a ton of battle scenes. I, in fact, the battle scenes were why I started putting writing tips on my website, because I noticed years ago that when I was getting stories from kids, all they were were battle scenes. Battle scene, battle scene, battle scene, battle scene. And there was no character development. And there was no rising tension. And there was no plot construction. And so I started to make those on my website so that um, kids could learn more about writing. And then I saw the writing change. And I saw more complex stories coming in because kids were watching these videos, which made me feel really good, i got to tell you. Um, but... I notice when I write my battle scenes, I kind of, I won't say I have a formula, but I have a pattern that I kind of follow. And when I wrote out this writing tip from my website, I didn't really understand the pattern until I kind of wrote it out. Uh, because this is kind of what I follow. I don't do it on every battle scene. I do it on many of them. Some of the components are missing because they were done the chapter before, or they're going to be done... Um, in the next chapter, but I wanted to lay this out for you. And so there's kind of, I have like five rules for um, battle scenes that I have to hit some of these in the battle scene. If the battle scene doesn't do any of these five things, it should be cut. And I'll tell you in my book, um, Confronting the Dragon, my third Minecraft novel, I had a really cool battle scene with Game Night and a bunch of Withers. And that was the first time I was going to use Withers, was in that third Minecraft novel. And now in my newest series, The Rise of the Warlords, with uh, book number 19, they finally came into the story. I, didn't, I haven't done them since then. But anyways, I wrote this battle scene, and I realized it was just a battle scene to have a battle scene. It didn't move the story forward. It didn't do anything with the character development or emotional things or anything. And so... It didn't satisfy any of these requirements, and so I cut it, and I just deleted it from the book. I thought it was a cool battle, but didn't do anything useful. So if, if your battle scene does not do any of these five things, you got to let it go. So first of all here, so the first thing, let me put this on the screen so you can see it. Boop, there. You have to reveal something about your character. Now, I will frequently... Um, show some sort of part of the character arc in the battle scene. Like, uh, wait, let me get rid of it. There, okay. Like, um, I'll show with Game Night, many of the stories with Game Night 999 were about fear and confronting your fear. And so he'll talk about being afraid. And only a lunatic is in battle and is not afraid. Everybody's afraid. And so I have the character always show that they're afraid because that's going to make the reader empathize with them more. And I also show with my characters that whoever's in charge, whether it's Game Night or it's Watcher, they feel responsible for the lives that are about to be lost. And so they're concerned about that. And so that's important to show that. So the first thing is reveal something about the characters. Now the second thing, uh, boop, there. Reveal a weapon or ability or a strategy that you're going to need later. So I, I will frequently do this in the battle scenes where I'm going to use some sort of trick. Wait, yeah, there, okay. I'm going to use some sort of trick that the character's going to need later on in the story. Like in the book that I just finished, which was Withers Awaken, I needed Watcher to have some elytra wings at the end of the story. And it was critical to the last battle. And so I had a battle where they were fighting, and I created a situation where he had to use some elytra wings there. I mentioned it earlier in the book that his sister gave him the wings, but here he used them to fly to remind the reader that they were there so that he can use them at the end and they don't just come out of nowhere magically. And so I will frequently do this. In a couple of stories with Game Night, there were TNT things that I used in a battle so that I could use them at the end of the story. I will frequently, this, this weapon or ability or strategy that I'm revealing in this battle, I don't make a big deal about it. 
I don't spend a lot of time mentioning it. I just show it to the reader so that I can use it later and it's not a surprise. I don't want to draw too much attention because then it's obvious that's what they're going to do with it. And so I'm kind of careful about that. So here's the next rule number three. Ooh. Is make the fight scene advance the plot. So you can't just fight because... Wait, hold on. Uh, there, okay. You can't just fight just to fight to fill the story and add some pages. It needs to somehow move the battle forward. In the current book I'm working on, the Wither, uh, Wither Invasion, I'm working on the battle that's in the middle of the book at the Dark Night of the Soul, if you've watched my plot construction videos. And here they're going to have this battle, and the villagers are going to lose, and they have to run away. And I need that to happen here so that they can run away and they can confront their failure and they can confront their fears, and I can have Watcher look at his character arc and think what did they do wrong and what does he have to do to, to save everybody and he's going to get mean and he's going to get mad. But he can't do it if they win the battle. They have to lose the battle. And so that's what's going to happen in that story and that's what I'm using this battle for, to advance the character arc of Watcher confronting whatever problem this story has, I won't tell you, for the main character. It's got to advance the plot forward. Okay, next one. Rule number four. Boop. Okay, you got to make the fight, un fight unique from all the other battles that you've had in the story. Um, I will frequently, I will write a battle scene and, uh, wait, let me get rid of it. Boop, there. I will write a battle scene and my editor will say, is it my editor's name is Corey, Corey Allen. He's an awesome editor. And he'll say, you know, this battle scene is just game night running around with a sword, fighting monsters. You got to do something different. And so I'll go back and look at the battle scene and come up with some sort of strategy, some sort of trick, you know, that maybe he uses a potion of leaping and that lets him jump up and hit something. Or maybe he uses a vanishing potion and he can sneak around and do something. There's got to be something different. It can't just be monsters and swords, monsters and swords, monsters and swords. You've got to have something different going on. So that's really, really important. Otherwise, your reader will get bored and they'll stop reading your battle scenes. So think about that. And then the last one, rule number five, boop, there. You got to make every battle scene a sensory experience for your reader. And that means you have to really put them in the battle scene and have them feel everything that's going on. So, wait, oh, there, okay. So I will frequently talk about sweat going down their head, Maybe it goes into their eye and it stings. Maybe it goes into their mouth and they taste the salty beads of sweat. I will frequently say that their nerves are ignited with fear or something. Uh, their heartbeat is pounding in their chest. Their breathing is short and raspy. Um, you know, they notice the wind is kicking up dust from the fallen bodies or something and the dust is choking their mouths or something. Um, I will try to come up with anything sensory that I can add into the battle because that puts the reader in the middle of the battle. And that makes it more exciting for them because the reader feels like they're part of the battle. And so that's really, really important. So you got to think about those five things. Let me put them all up on the screen at once. This is going to be hard, so hold on. Ready? Oh, there. Oh, I didn't think I was strong enough. So you got to have these five things, not all of them in every battle, but you got to have some of them. If you're not hitting any of those, then that battle scene's got to go because a battle scene is a tool, and if you're not using, if you're not satisfying any of these five requirements, then your tool isn't doing anything. It's the wrong tool for your story. So you really need to think about this and be honest about your battle scene because frequently battle scenes are just guys with swords fighting zombies, and if that's all it is, you've got to say bye-bye to that battle scene. It's really important. So that's the five rules that I have. And I'd like you to think about those when you write your battle scene. And maybe have when you write your battle scene, read it to somebody and then read it to a friend. And then both of you look at the five um, things you want to hit and see which of those do you satisfy. Maybe you don't satisfy any. But think about that and work on your battle scenes. Battle scenes are really important. Battle scenes are awesome. Um, but keep writing, and I'll talk about the next thing soon. Bye.